Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, we'll be covering the Luhansk and Donetsk fronts, where, including the Bakhmut front. Starting out in the Luhansk front, for the ones who miss a Ukrainian advance, here we have one. The Ukrainian forces have managed to capture Novosilivsky, uh, which is this western part of the highway uh, just across Kusimivka. And the uh, Ukrainian forces just advanced and captured this western part. This is both reported by Suryak mapping as well as Rybar. Moving further south in the direction of Lushenka and Genepopivka, the Russian forces are continuing the attacks west of these areas as they try to expand the zone of control. As they say, the best defense is offense, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to prevent any Ukrainian advances by attacking first. And there is a large artillery duel going on within this area. As for Bilohorivka and Vokhtakamyanska, the Russian forces continue their attacks, although they are seeing no success. As for the Spirne area itself, the Ukrainian forces managed to expand their zone of control further south of Spirne, so that they have a larger buffer zone around their village. And the Russian forces have been pushed further back in this area. As for Rostolivka and Krasnopolivka, the Russian forces continue their attacks, according to the War Council report. The Ukrainian forces who were defending west of Solodar and Silch uh, have retreated across the river line and are retreating to the villages of Fedorivka and Vesyukivka, which indicates that the Russian forces will most likely uh, manage to capture Krasnopolivka, Mikulaivka and Rosolivka as they try to reach the river line and they will gain fire control over the road that connects to the highway towards Siversk, uh, which means that that is all they want to control at the very least. If they cross the river line, then they mean to go all the way to Siversk. As for the south of Solodar, we see that the Russian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Lahodatne, Krasnogora, and Paraskovivka. All of this to continue trying to cut off the road north of Bakhmut and cut off the supplies going to Bakhmut itself from the north, while at the same time fighting continues to the east of the city. And the Russian forces have now been confirmed to have taken Klishivka. The Wagner PMC's leader has announced that Klishivka has all been taken by the Wagner PMC. This now exposes the Ukrainian flank to the west, where it allows the Russian forces to advance towards the highway in multiple directions, similar to what we see down here, and to the northern area as well, in the direction of Ivanivska, Jasevyar, and Stupochki. And this is one step closer for Bakhmut to be completely encircled. It is essentially now almost uh, operationally encircled as the Russian forces are attacking in the northern direction in the direction of Pereskovivka as well as Krasnogora. And in the southern direction, they can now attack in the direction of Ivanivska, which allows them to take fire control over the highway to the south. So both highways are now under Russian fire control. Uh, not sure exactly about the northern one, but the southern one definitely. And then there's the one road, uh, which is a smaller road between Bakhmut and Chesif Yard, which will be the main supply route now that the Russians are close to both highways. And now it is only a matter of time until the Ukrainian forces need to either pull out of Bakhmut or conduct a counterattack, because right now the situation for the Ukrainians is looking very grim, as the Russian forces can take advantage of the situation and completely encircle Bakhmut, as well as all the Ukrainian soldiers which are located within this area if all the if we look at this map we can see that if all the Ukrainian forces within the Bakhmut area which is this area specifically if all of these forces manage to get encircled by the Russian forces that would leave 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24,000, 28,000 soldiers uh, if that is, uh, if all of these brigades are at max capacity, but most likely they're about half percent, which is still about 14,000 troops or about 15,000 troops at risk of encirclement, which would be a huge blow to the Ukrainian forces. So you will have to see what happens from now on. However, it is clear that the Russian forces have ga gained a huge advantage by capturing Klishivka. And let's move on to the next part. Then we have this weird report by the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense where they claim that Russian forces are attacking in Oleksandro Shultine, which makes no sense because Ukraine has both Bilagora and Dulevka uh, to the east of this. However, considering how these are just small villages, which are just very long, uh, bo both of them are, 
uh, it could be that the Russian forces are attacking from this northern area uh, where they had crossed the canal and are attacking in this direction, expanding the zone, maybe in the direction of Stubushki and, Dere and Pedetschina. If this is the case, then most likely the Ukrainians had some units in this area and faced them, which is why they reported it as this village. Well, it's just a garrison of this village and not the actual village the fighting is ongoing in. Uh, either way, this indicates that the Russian forces are attempting two ways of cutting off this highway. One straight to uh, through Klishivka and to Ivanivska, and the second one to the west to attack Stubushki and Predeshina. There's also the possibility of them trying to capture these three villages to the south to gain a larger zone of control uh, in to the south of Bakhmut and make sure that the Ukrainian forces do not manage a counter-offensive from Konstantinivka to cut off the Russian forces to the south of Bakhmut. As for the Donetsk front itself, fighting continues in the area of Vodiane as well as Nevelske. As Russian forces continue attacking Nevelske to prevent any Ukrainian groupings, as for the Vodiane area, it is reported by War Council that the Russian forces are attempting to expand their zone of control and send artillery to the front so that they can shell Avdivka from the west as well. From the Marinka and Pobieda area, we see that the Russian forces are reported to continue fighting within Pobieda. As for Marinka itself, it is reported that the Russian forces have captured all the high-rise buildings here by the city center, which is why they consider all of the western part to be in a gray zone, because all of these areas are in the residential area, and from drone footage we can see that the city is completely destroyed. The drone footage is uploaded by Sky News, you can go check it out. It's from the 15th of January. I will not show it as I don't want to get copyrighted by the mainstream media. But uh, the drone footage itself shows complete destruction over the whole uh, western part of Makivka, as well as the eastern part. And this indicates that with the loss of the high ground, the high-rise buildings, which gives an oversight over the whole city, the Russian forces have gained a significant advantage within the fighting here. And this report was confirmed by both Rybar and Walkonso. Now, if we look at the front as a whole, specifically around the Bakhmut front, we see that the Russian forces have significantly taken the initiative, especially around this front line, where they now have many uh, opportunities to advance. The first one going towards Siversk to cut off the Ukrainian forces on the front line and taking control over the southern area of Kremina, securing the southern flank and allowing them to restart attempts towards gaining back Liman from the last time they controlled it as well as having the opportunity to go straight towards Konstantinivka and cut off the Ukrainian forces to the south around the Turetska New York area, or even go straight ahead to the Chesiv Yar and cut off as many as possible by going towards Slovyansk and completely encircling the Siversk area. So they have a lot of options right now because of the developments, especially with the capture of Klishivka and Solidar, Bakhmut is now extremely vulnerable, which gives the Russians a huge advantage on this part of the front line. And that's going to be all for this update. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.